Technology in Equatorial Guinea is still out of reach to most people, and that's mainly uh, two reasons. One, the cost associated with going to a cyber cafe or cybernet cafe and accessing an email account. Um, so if you are in Equatorial Guinea and you have a job with one of the oil companies or one of the companies working with the oil companies, then you have the, I think it's about $2, mil francos, that it takes to go to an to internet cafe and access your, uh, your account for 15 minutes, right? Uh, if you don't have that job or if you're in a situation where with those $2 you have to decide whether you buy food or you go to the internet, most people today are still buying the food for obvious reasons. Uh, so for that reason, primarily, internet or, or technology is still not available to the majority of, of young people inside the country. The other issue, you know, is also electricity. Electricity and bandwidth, you know, this is still a situation, a, a country where most people inside the Equatorial Guinea do not have electricity at night. I was in Equatorial Guinea, uh, last time I was there in 2004, 2005, I was still living with my family with a candle or a kerosene lamp, right? So because of electricity, uh, right now we're organizing a conference and to get my colleagues to send me a copy of their passport is an ordeal. It's taking weeks and weeks because they have to wait for the day where they can go to a cybernet with electricity and they have to wait for the day where their scanner is working and they have to figure out how to resize it small enough to be able to get it from Equatorial Guinea to the U.S. But we are better off today than we were 10 years ago, certainly. And I hope that if in the next few years, it's only going to improve. Slowly, it's happening, it's beginning to happen. There are a couple of cybernets in the capital and the same in the second largest city, Bata. We still have a problem with power, electricity. There is no electricity often. But more and more young people are getting accounts, opening accounts on Facebook. And more and more people are reading what is happening outside. There is a fantastic uh, blogger. He's a comic artist and blogger, Ramon Ze. He runs a blog called Las Locuras de Ramon. And daily he has a piece relevant to what's happening politically, socially in the country. And daily he has a comic, uh, uh, a drawing, an image to go with that. And between him and an organization called ASODEGE, Asociación de para la Solidaridad con Guinea Equatorial, also based in Madrid, they have managed to keep people inside Equatorial Guinea informed of what's happening outside. And they have managed to let young people know that we can love our country and still be critical. And I am, I am happy to report that, you know, that is beginning to have some change. There is an opening there. EG Justice, the organization I, I run, is doing a lot of work right now with Ramon Ze, this artist that I talked about, and other artists, they're also based inside the country, for reason why I cannot mention their names, to form these networks inside the country where we can begin to get information out slowly using the little space that, 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 that these cybernets are providing. You know? and, and I think that is the way, that is the way to an Equator Guinean spring. That's the way for towards change in Equatorial Guinea. We have to use those mechanisms and we have to use these young people. They, have, they are creative and they're willing to use that creativity to interpret and, and influence the, this, this country that we have inherited.